Hello, hello, my name is Sexy Neckbeard, and this is my Let's Play of Kerbal Space Program. Um, I, I really love this game, so this is my first Let's Play. It could go any way, but as uh, Will Ferrell said in The Elf, I'm in love, I'm in love, and I don't care who knows it. And that's about this game. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you all the th things I really like about it, but first, before we get started, let me just say that I already went through the training. Um, kind of basic, maybe not necessary, maybe just the to the mun. I also went through the first two scenarios. One is just the EVA to return to your ship. And the second one is maybe the most challenging um, that I completed. And you need to use the MUN to slingshot your way back to Kerbal, which is, you know, the same as Earth. I also did try MUN Orbit, which is like Apollo 11. However, uh, I was not successful in both of the times I tried it, I, I didn't succeed. My lander crashed, and yeah, it looks something like this. So, so let's get to it then. Let me start a new game. Neckbeard. Start. Overwrite. So I just did a Let's Play, uh, recorded it, and the volume was not working. So here we go, part two. This will be more of a tutorial one, my only tutorial one. After this, I'll be figuring out things as I go. Uh, I just want my first objective. So in a sandbox game like this, until they set up career, we're going to need to just make our own objectives. And that's fun. I love doing that. My first objective will be to get somebody to the moon. Uh, pff, whoa. Not to the moon. Just somebody to orbit once and then hopefully a return. Uh, the pods you can choose, I'm just choosing the outer space one and the one-seater. Of these three, this is the one-seater. And some basic stuff I want to add to that immediately is a parachute. Um, I want to be able to control it from spinning. So SAS neutralizes uh, spin or rotation of the axis, helps you fly straight. Um, I'm also going to put on these RCS thruster blocks. Um, to add more than one at a time, I just hit X to increase the symmetry. And I'm going to add another set, and this is going to be a three. And I want that perfect there because... Uh, and the RCS, uh, in order to fuel it, I'm going to add this small RCS tank. and hopefully perfectly aligned because OCD. Last for our module I'm just going to put on a ladder. A ladder. And uh, we don't need symmetry for this one. We just want it right next to the door to get back in. Great, so there is the top part of our module. Now we need to add a stack decoupler because everything else is going to be big heavy fuel and we want that to all separate once the fuel is used up. So here's our stack decoupler and the red arrow says that the red arrow is showing us that this will separate down so everything below including the stack decoupler will go and now let's add some fuel. Now there's two choices for fuel if you want to, to speak about rocket fuel. There's the liquid oxidizer mix and there's also this solid fuel. Solid fuel meaning that once you ignite it it will burn all the way through. You cannot stop it. Um, the solid fuel is cheaper and I, I, I suppose this is true in real life too. Uh, it's kind of used just to get you off the ground and then normally the liquid oxygen mix is used if you need controlled burns. So, like in space. <coughs> However, the, the liquid oxygen mix, I'm just going to call it the liquid fuel, is more efficient. So there's no reason why we shouldn't use it right now. Because 
this is in career mode and we don't have to worry about money. Also, I can I like to role play in these games and really put myself in a situation. So even when I do that, I can justify using well, certainly I'll use the liquid fuel for the center main engine, but I'm going to add some radial engines. So we got a radial decoupler. Let's do this three times. And here is where I could add the solid fuel, but I'm going to go ahead and instead add the exact same engine. Oh dear, come on. This is always the challenge with this, is to get it to work. It's just so bizarre to me why this sometimes doesn't work. Come on. Come, oh my goodness. I, I, I've had problems with this several times. Sometimes it just, it just bugs. Okay, let's try to... Aha! So for no reason at all, that worked now. And I'll go ahead and move this up a little bit, actually. I want it slightly lower than the other one, but not much. And we'll see why in a moment. Okay, good. Now, for symmetry, we add... Wow, that is not at all there. So the last decision we want to make is uh, what kind of engine to add. First we have the T30, which is, of the two I'm going to compare, has higher engine power at 215, and it doesn't have thrust vectoring. I'm going to put this one on all three of the outside ones. For my initial dis uh, ascent, I don't really need, I just want pure power. The thrust vectoring one is going to be nice because when we're in space, we can control direction just by using uh, rocket fuel. Lastly, I'm going to pretend that I'm going to reuse these side engines, although there's no mechanism for reusing them in the sandbox. And so I'm going to add parachutes to these. Okay, so our, our, our rocket craft is done. All it needs is a name and staging. And maybe, just maybe, we should put some wings on it. Okay. If nothing else, it's going to make it look cool. Okay, great. So the last thing we want to do is st for staging. Uh, right now, parachute opens last. The top section decouples second to last. That's all good. And right now, this engine doesn't burn until the other, th excuse me, until the other three are complete. Now that's perfectly viable. I'm sure that this would get to space no problem. What I'm going to do is, uh, I think this is slightly more efficient if we actually add a fuel duct, and we want to add it from the engine that we want to be drained to the one we want to drain it. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have all four engines fire from the very start. The reason for this is engines are more effective the further away from the center of gravity you go. Just because gravity gravity dies at the as a square, so um, and even even more so because the atmosphere uh, has drag, but when we go to outer space, there's no drag. So basically, the faster that we can get out into space, the better. And that's mainly because of gravity. Because the faster that we try to do that, technically, the more the drag affects us. But um, I, I think that in this case, we won't we won't be bypassing that optimization. We won't be going over the hill. We'll be going not fast enough. The drag slows us down too much. So I want all three engines then. And oh my goodness, no. 
I do not want these parachutes opening right away. This is what I want. I want all four engines firing. Then after I, I hit spacebar to get this started, which will be lift off. Then later I want um, the three outside radial engines to decouple and fall. And after that their parachute to open, all in the same spacebar. And when that happens, it'll only be the main engine left. After the main engine is at some point in the future completely used up, we decouple it. Hopefully it falls ho harmlessly into the ocean, and then we parachute home. Now, Challenger, uh, let's see, what are, I'm going to name my after animals. So the flying turtle, one, I, mark one. Save and launch. Okay, Jebediah Kerman is our faithful, faithful Kerman astronaut for the mission. The only thing to note here is I'm, I'm pressing shift to throttle up. Control would be to throttle back down. I'm hitting T to engage SAS. And the last thing is I'm going to hit M to look on the orbital map. There's uh, the launch center. And according to this, the best thing for me to do will be to go east out over the ocean. So to go east, I want to go one eighty should be south. It should be north ninety degrees. Although this looks backwards. Uh, this should be east. Huh. But 90 degrees I know is east just on, on a compass. 270 is west. So we'll be heading 90 degrees. I, I don't know if that is going to take us west or east. We'll find out. <laughs> and space bar to lift off. <laughs> no countdown because I'm a terrible person. Jebediah just gets immediately launched. So good. We're going straight up. This is great. And we notice that uh, this bottom liquid fuel is depleting slower because technically it's including the liquid fuel for it's depleting the liquid fuel for all of these three so that's my center engine okay so we're slightly tilting press Q to counter this rotation and let's get going instead of going west let's go yeah so this is taking us over the water that's what I want about at 10,000 is usually when I make my uh, my turn. We'll be doing an equatorial orbit, east-west. I usually, uh, I usually don't start my turn until about 10,000. So now we can start dropping. If anybody knows, like, what is the exact most efficient trajectory? I'm sure it's a curve, but uh, better than what I'm doing here. Just feel free to tell me. Okay, there they go, and the parachutes are deploying, and I'm assuming that they don't kill people. And let's con just cut engines here, and see on the map how we're doing. Okay, good. So, those engines are going to fall harmlessly into the ocean. Hopefully the parachutes help. And I have an apoapsis of 57,000. Not enough. I want to get at least to 70 to get out of the atmosphere. So here we go, shift to re-engage the engines. And you can see the amount of liquid fuel left in my tank is about 90% since I burned all the other fuel first. Okay, 75, 70, maybe at 80,000. Oh, I'll kill it. Okay, great. Um how to get to orbit. If you just went straight up, which is perfectly fine, your apoapsis would still have a curve just because curveball itself is rotating. So even if I just went straight up, I wouldn't come back down in the same spot. However, I am tilted, so I definitely have an arc to me. <coughs> but imagining I just went straight vertical. The best way to 
establish an orbit is to wait to get to the apoapsis and then to thrust prograde or in the same direction you're moving. So we're going to see how this affects us. You can see that this will give us an orbit around. Well, we need more than Oh, this is perfect. Whatever I've done here is perfect. <coughs> Excuse me. Goodness. So, in order to do that, we need to very quickly begin burning, because we have 10 seconds to do this. So here we go. Engage. Now, over here you'll see that my controls are very... affecting very quickly my change of direction. I'm going to hit caps lock. This turns this blue, which means my controls are now really fine. Which is uh, usually much more useful when you're doing these small, like, stay on course corrections. Okay, about half our fuel. How are we doing now? Still not there. We probably need to wait for all this delta V. Let's follow this blue mark. In fact, I want to chase the blue mark back down to my actual direction of movement. So you do that by kind of capturing, like putting your direction of movement in between. Uh, you want to put your direction that you're firing on the opposite side of where you want it to go. So if the blue mark was here, and my yellow circle is still here, I would want to put my direction movement here to chase that back down to here. Okay, good, good. So we have some weak orbit. 50,000 is much too small, so we will actually need to keep thrusting. And I'm actually going to thrust away from the planet. If you thrust exact exactly tangential to the planet, um, that that affects your orbit on the opposite side. I'll show you this in a moment, but if you thrust in any direction which is not exactly your current vector, it affects the orbit where you are. Hopefully I'll be able to show you this more later, but let's just do this and cut engines periapsis is 67 that's a little too I don't want to get into the atmosphere I really don't so I'm gonna thrust right now and as soon as this becomes my periapsis okay okay great cancel this maneuver just so we can only see one line now, what's the goal? Not just to orbit, but really, I want to orbit just once. Who cares about orbiting a million times? Do I have enough fuel? No, I don't. So, I just want to return to my Kerbal Space Launch Program, which is right here. Which means that in order to af most efficiently affect something that occurs here, I want to implement a maneuver on the exact opposite side of the orbit. And you'll see this. So I want my periapsis to be probably like exactly in the same spot. Maybe a little bit after. So we can see that changing my direction on this side of the orbit has no effect on this exact location. It only affects what's happening over here. And because it's affecting what's happening over here, it also curves everything in between. That's for my z-axis, if my z-axis is my direction of travel. Uh, any of these x or y direction changes will affect my orbit here. But we don't care about that, so let's just see about crashing back into the atmosphere. Okay, so you can see it's going to happen a little too early, and really, for my in my own opinion, too shallow. So let's rotate 
and fire backwards. So something I guess like this is going to be the ideal. Another thing to note, which Kerbal Space Program, the game itself, does not take into account, is the ability to bounce off the atmosphere. If you come in at too shallow of a descent, you know, you hear from movies, from NASA, you can actually skip off the atmosphere and, you know, basically like bounce back out, which isn't good. Um, I don't know if that's implemented in this game because I have never done it. So I just try to implement it myself. This seems like too shallow of a descent for me, so what I want to do is change this maneuver to be a little later. The later we do it, the more we have to thrust, but the steeper our descent. And that still seems way too shallow. But what I'll end up doing, I think, is adding this maneuver and then adding another maneuver here, which is like a, a really steep. Uh, well let's cancel that one until we finish the first one. I don't know if you guys are able to follow all this. I'm doing a little math in my head. I can't really explain very well. So let's just get to something more entertaining, which is uh, EVA extravehicular activity. Um, so here's Jebediah. He's now right outside the door, looking back inside, I guess. L to turn on lights, and R to engage his rocket pack. There it is. WASD controls him still. So we can see if I hit spacebar, he'll face that direction. Let's go on to the, to the other side. And we can see that I can actually light up things with my light. Shift and control are up and down respectively. We can perhaps be inspecting the rocket, see if there's any obvious structural weakness. There's the detach points right there from our assisting rockets. Everything looks good. That was a quick EVA. Get him to grab onto the ladder again. Whoops. Bumped his head. Just get to that ladder. Hit F to grab on. And climb up. And F to board. Whoops. F to board. Okay, great. The next thing is I'm going to speed up time. You can either click here or you can hit period to move forward in time, warp forward, or comma to warp back. I'm going to hit period a few times because well, it looks like our maneuver was canceled. That's not good. We'll just redo it. Let me slow down. Quickly redo my maneuver. Yeah, our, right now our perhaps is right at the actual I want, see, ideally I want something like this. This is what I want. How much delta V is that? Okay, I think that's doable. Okay, so let's, uh... I want this to land just in front of it because what's going to happen is we're going to slow down. I don't think this is taking into account drag. So, when we slow down, I want that I want us to be a little bit ahead, and I don't mind if we land... Okay, actually, I don't want to land in the ocean, so... So we can pick up Jebediah. Okay, 250, I think that's doable, so let's just speed on ahead to our maneuver point. And it's in five minutes. You see he's only been up in the air for 40 minutes now. And about at... One minute is when I'm going to to start moving everything into position. We'll go ahead and hit M to get out of there now. I want to retro burn, so this is forward, a normal burn. Turn off SAS and let us rotate 
spin ourselves this way. In fact, spin ourselves this way too. So with SES, you just will keep spinning indefinitely in space, whatever way you, whatever like momentum you impart cannot be reduced by friction in the air, so you'll just keep spinning. Let's get right to this dot. Come on, a little more. And I think that's good. Um, actually, what I really want to happen is I want to move this a little more. And I'll show you why in a moment. Oops. No, not, not that. Yeah. I actually want the engine which I'm going to disengage to fall into the ocean. So I want... That's a nice steep... That's a steeper descent at least. I want to basically just burn as much... Oops. Of this engine away before it falls into the ocean so nobody is hurt. Because I like to role play the as if I was a real commander of this operation. And in 30 seconds then we'll begin this and see what happens. Okay, let's start our burn. Looking good. I think this fuel is going to be still too much, but whoops. Rocket's kind of getting Let's burn again. Almost out. Okay, well, what do you do about empty rocket fuel? I mean, it's, we're not empty of it. Let's cancel this maneuver. Uh, we can see that I am an idiot and I'm burning way too... Whoa, okay. So I am on the wrong continent. I want to go to here. <laughs> well, we really did a... really made a big mistake here. Let's quickly fix as much of this as possible. Give ourselves as much of a burn as possible moving forward and upward whatever you got left rocket why don't you just give me it now well maybe maybe I regret this yeah shoot ah mistake Compiled, by, uh, piled on top of a mistake here. Sexy neckbeard, not going to get Jebediah home. I mean, he looks happy, but he doesn't really understand what's going on here. We, we may not be able to land him because I'm. I've only left us. Oh, jeez. All right, Jebediah. Okay, let's just let release that. Where is it going to go? It's going to go. I think that's going to land in the ocean. Okay, that's fine. Well, time is of the essence right here. We still have RCS fuel, monoprop. And we're going to use that to try to decelerate us as quickly as possible. So H and N are the two ways to force RCS fuel to act as thrust. Since uh, this throttle is only for really liquid fuel or solid fuel. Also, if you're using a jet engine. But RCS is just used to mainly to like steer and for docking procedures when you need really fine movements. However, the good news is this vessel is so light, I can actually get it to do what I want. Oh dear, I, I've, I don't know what is wrong with me. I just keep overshooting everything. I want to go up. I don't think we'll be able to. We in the end will not. 
will not end up landing anywhere near where I want to. Where am I going to land right now? Okay, well, I'm over water now, so just have to... Whoops, whoops, whoops. We want to burn up and forward with everything we got. The last thing I want is an ocean touchdown, which is exactly what it looks like we're going to get here. I am not impressed with my own <laughs> clumsiness here. Come on, just don't fall so quickly. We need to get over to land. I think we're going to make it. Okay. Let's see how we're doing here. We're definitely being slowed down by drag. Oops. So that's... <laughs> this is the most bizarre... <laughs> truly bizarre. Okay, let's start slowing ourselves down. Whoops. Last thing I can mention is the parachute. I'm not exactly sure what's the best way of doing this. I've seen other people deploy in the atmosphere, and I'm not, it seems like that that could be the right thing. That could be. I just would rather not deploy the parachute until the heat of reentry uh, is over with. I'd rather deploy it, you know, at 10,000 meters or something. 10 kilometers up, still plenty of time. Okay, we really want that atmosphere to get us. I'm even going to start saying let's try to increase our descent speed. We have plenty of props, so I'll just do this as quickly as possible. The faster we can get down, the more it'll slow us. Probably more than anything I can do. Come on, come on. There's uh, where we want to be. And unfortunately, I really don't think we're going to make it. I think we're going to have an ocean landing. I don't know how to recover from an ocean landing. So, sad times, sad times. Unless we can really get down there quick. I don't even think we have enough prop. Okay, uh, this is good. Now the atmosphere is breaking us. We might just get really lucky. No. no. I think not. I think not. Okay. Well, now we just need to let the atmosphere do its thing. Hopefully, Jebediah doesn't get killed by the G-forces. Although, you can't kill him with G-forces right now, I think. Yeah, we'll definitely have a water landing here. Um, deploy my parachute in kind of a hopeless attempt to slow us down more. <laughs> There's the Kerbal Space Program. Launch center. And we are going to overshoot. That's okay. I don't know how to build a boat, but let's just pretend that Jebediah can swim back. I'm going to accelerate time. Now I'm going to accelerate time one more time and you can get this message. Physics warp, blah, blah, blah. It basically just says don't be careful about speeding up beyond 2. I can tell you exactly when this is important. At 500 meters, the parachute opens. When the parachute opens, if you're on 3x, it will disconnect. So you have to make sure you are at only 2x for the actual parachute opening. Well, overall, I'd say this wasn't a terrible failure. Um, we got more or less what we wanted, which is more luck than anything else, but that's okay. And this will conclude my tutorial-like uh, Let's Play. The very next 
Let's Play will be something about getting airplanes to go. And then we'll really get our, our program into the air. So, thanks for watching.